Uh, hello everyone and uh, welcome to your, well, this is going to be my first review day because I've been sent some gear from um, IC Station. So we're going to crack this open and see what's inside here. Now IC Station contacted me, they're a uh, company, uh, well, yeah, kind of little mini company set up over in China to um, help the maker community and the hacker community out there. All you makers and all your you hobbyists, okay, you can get all your stuff from them. They do some pretty good deals and um, yeah, what more do you need to know? They're there to they support you all the way. They sell everything uh, from the modular point of view, module point of view for um, uh, microcontrollers and uh, development systems, so things like the Arduino, the Pickaxe, uh, whatever. You know, they all your shields, all your plug-in modules, um, components. They sell those and some things like accel uh, accelerometers, gyros, and what have you, all pre-built onto. You know, so you bought it with breakouts, breakout pins to make connectivity a lot easier. And uh, yeah, they've decided to send me some stuff. Now then. Uh, all looks okay. Uh, they are based in China, by the looks of things, and um, yeah, sent by uh, sent through Singapore. So, let's see what's inside this. Let's see. Right in. Can't crack this open. Been double taped. Uh, can we get some? No, that sticky stuff is still. Uh, when I was really stuck down on that, so let's get in there. Let's see what we got. Feels pretty bulky. Little bubble wrap. All right, what have we got? Uh, what's this? Uh, some uh, English receipt. One and uh, I've got a. What's this? Happy 2014. Airsoft Peak. Yeah, okay, whatever. Free shipping worldwide. Ooh. Yeah, free shipping worldwide, yes, yeah, on. Yeah. Well, happy your parcels got to you smoothly. Uh, check all your items if there's any problems with it. Contact us. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, we'll be grateful if you could help others to know more about our service. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, whatever. Uh, yeah, we've got something here. Um, well taped up, not bubble wrapped. It's actually foamy packed with loads of sticky tape. Uh, let's get in here. What do we have? Oh, bloody hell. Alright, that's something to shut off. Packing is a little bit over packed. Well, it is. We've got a little. Okay. Something or another. It could be part 3371 or MO4. Uh, MO406, something or another. It's a display of some sort with a. Uh, looks like a. The mister or something attached to the side. And we've got what looks like a motor shield. And the uh, stepper motor shield, so let's open up these. Alright then, uh, first up, hopefully you can see this clearly. Uh, I'll try and get in a little bit more. Um, ba -ba 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 -bum, ba -ba -bum, there we go. Uh, first up, the stepper motor. Okay, uh, looking at this build quality, it's reasonably okay. Um, Nothing uh, loose. Uh, soldering uh, looks perfectly fine. It's a uh, I've actually done it on a double-sided board. Um, there we go. Stepper motor uh, powered by uh, Hoya Keys or someone. Uh, stepper motor is fixed using uh, some hex spaces. Uh, couple of uh, nuts and bolts and what have you. It's all fixed to your PCB. Uh, two headers 
Uh, the actual stacker motor is connected with a polarized header. Uh, break out your uh, whatever your Arduino or your MSP or whatever from the side VCT, GND, and each of your stepper things uh, labeled uh, in A, in B, in C, in D, and so on. Uh, can't see any markings on the stepper motor itself, it's probably on the rear. Can't be asked taking it off, but yeah, it's a generic stepper motor, cheapo one. Uh, driver chip for it, so it can be this shield can be plugged directly into your Arduino. Um, it's a uh, a ULN two double O three. It's a basic uh, uh, driver chip. Uh, and out just uh, I think it's just a basic Darlington pair, just a transistor driver for your um, step motor. Uh, other construction wise, yeah, it's got silk, it's perfectly fine by the looks of things. No, oh mate, no, not quite. Uh, I'll zoom in here so you can actually see this. Um, silk's not great because, well, everything is readable. As you can see down here, oh, I've got a pointy stick thing, there you go, an antenna will do it. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. These are all up the right way. Your actual uh, motor connections are printed upside down. Um, yeah, <laughs> um, not a biggie though. Uh, it's still readable. You just gotta spin it, you know, just to read the text on the board. Uh, yeah, apart from that, everything else looks okay. Um, got a LED on there just to say whether or not you got power. Just down here, it's a little surface mount jobby. So I pull up, oh, this, yeah, this like voltage shunt resistor over here for the LED, and it looks like a current sense resistor or something, just to make sure that you don't overload. Possibly on there. Yep. So not much you can really say about that. Um, I've got an Adreno already set up over here. So if we zoom out, we can actually see whether or not this works. So let's uh, plug this sucker in there then I've got, I'm going to power this up with say 3.5 volts rather than the standard 5 volts off on the Bruno uh, so because I want to see what how it reacts with a low power if it can run off 3.3 .3 volts perfectly fine then it will run off your Adreno perfectly fine with 5 volts or 3.3 .3 volts or your MSPs which are lower uh, right how the hell did I connect this up right it goes to there. If all goes well, this should run directly off the Arduino examples because I've just loaded one of them. And uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. Let's run this plug in that in. Uh, there we go, right then. All powered up. And I don't know if you can see this, this is spinning straight off. Yep, so, yeah, not very good at the old focus on this camera, but there we go. Yep, so you can see the motor's turning. That's what it says on the tin. So if, uh, if you're interested in learning how to control a basic stepper motor, yeah, yeah perfectly fine. And um, here's the... Uh, Info. Let's see if I can pull the info up. So here it is a stepper motor um, shield uh, with 5 volt stepper motor, but it does run off 3.3 .3 volts, as I've just proved. But it will run off with 5 volts. Um, let's have a look. Yeah, it's a ULN2003 motor driver. Did I say ULN? Yeah, it's the ULN. Uh, it does what it says, four-way signal connector, yeah, it's four-way plus two for your uh, power and ground. Um, yeah, step angles, ratio reduction, blah, 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 1 to 64. Um, yeah, it is uh, what it says, price. Six dollars ninety-six. So what that be in pounds? Well, about four quid in pounds, roughly. 
uh, four or five pound. So that's not too bad for a stepper motor. But and you can always hack it apart so you can take off the driver chip and your stepper motor and mount it into whatever you want if you want to redesign the board and all that stuff as well so yeah not too bad the only drawback was that uh, silk screen being upside down well yeah kind of no biggie there all right so moving on next thing that we got is a little uh, display thing here um, what more can I say about this there's no outputs as such on this um, except for the display so for a module you can't really use it for anything else other than what it was built for it's a 4 in 1 unit uh, temperature sensor what's supposedly a voltmeter but I can't find any inputs for a to measure voltage so I imagine it just measures your supply voltage uh, that's a little bit of a yeah, bit of misleading there uh, apparently it all uh, you can use it as a clock and as a date display uh, if it is modular and this is going into any of your boxes then um, it's not really going to be much use because the two switches are at the rear so you don't so once you put that into a front panel you've got no control over it whatsoever that's a bit of a screw up um, circuit wise yeah it looks fine it's very compact and everything there's the mister for your temperature sense it looks like it has been bodged on um, it hasn't been insulated or anything it does look like that it's been through hell in the post uh, bent and what have you so it would be interesting to see whether that still works fine um, four seven segment displays a few points um, yeah judging by this so far I'm not expecting much still let's find out um, well, first up, let's have a look to see if we can find out how to actually use this. Right, then, so this is the uh, web page for the product um, IC station 4 in 1 clock voltage date uh, temperature detection module. Um, it's under modules, but it's not exactly modular, which is a yeah, <laughs> it's a bit odd. Um, product features. Uh, one five different kinds of display mode okay what's the fifth one I do not know because I only specify four and one uh, let's see only show time only show the date only show temperature only show voltage and time temperature alternating display hmm. might have been better with time and date alternating but time temperature yeah fine whatever uh, probably add an extra little bit of space on a micro and uh, he decided to whack that on. Um, DS1302 uh, clock module, provide accurate time. Yeah, okay, basic time chip. I might have you run off a crystal. Um, no, nothing special there. Um, you can set adjust the time when power off. Time will go on because of. Da, 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 da. Yeah, battery backup. So if you lose power, you've got battery backup. That's the battery on the rear. That's that little coin cell thing. Module can be used as a voltmeter to measure voltage. I would really love to know where because there's no probes. Uh, ah, the input voltage must be more than 7 volts to use it as a voltmeter. So let's see what we can measure as the voltmeter. Uh, module can measure temperature where it works. Obviously, it has to work in order to measure temperature, so it's yeah, there's quite a bit of bullshit in this, really. Um, reading further down, yeah, function 24 hour timing error correction settings. I'd love to know what its error correction settings are and how it does that. It doesn't actually doesn't specify, no, it doesn't. Um, yeah, for a very enclosed device, it's, uh, I don't know how it will correct for error in timing, since that it's all integrated, but, hmm. 
soon find out I guess so electrical characteristics input 5 to 18 volts input current 0 to 40 milliamps not too sure about that we basically they're saying with no current it doesn't work <laughs> it works with no current so yeah that's a little bit of bullshit there voltage resolution 2.29 millivolts okay there we go. we'll check that out make sure that it is that temperature resolution within a degree okay you can check that I've got an, a, a multimeter with a thermal cup on we'll vary the temperatures and have a measure on that uh, measure voltage range 7 to 18 volts hmm I imagine this is for the voltmeter voltage range only goes from 7 volts well that's a little bit shit really up to 18 volts you've almost got 50% un unreadable and it's only you know if it's a little squiggly it's an average so you know on average 7 to 18 volts so that's bleh. Don't like that. I uh, still would love to know how you measure voltage. I still believe it might be the supply voltage. If that's the case, then I don't know. Mm. Not so sure how useful that'll be. Probably a little extra addition. Measure temperature resolution minus 20 to 59. Okay, so it's not going to be able to it'll just measure your you know, internal operation of your device or whatever, I guess, whatever's inside the case. Voltage, regulation, accuracy, voltage, yeah, accuracy range, minus two and a half volts to two and a half volts. Hmm. Voltage, regulation, accuracy range, whatever that the hell that is meant to mean, I do not know. Is it related to the uh, actual powering of the unit, or is it? Something to do with the multimeter, the the voltmeter function, or the voltage resolution, or oh, crap knows. Is it the display accuracy that only go up in two and a half volt increments? Who knows? Um, love to find out if it what that minus two and a half volts is. So it seems that everything is quoted as positives, so, and we've suddenly got a negative. So mm, unless it's how it uh, relates the voltage to the temperature scale who knows it the temperature scale may run from oh, I ain't got a bloody clue and no temperature precision is the next one down minus 5 to plus 5 so yeah plus or minus 5 degrees where they just say temperature resolution is 1 degree precision adjustment range still don't know what that so, uh, I don't know, I'm not too sure what that means. Temperature sensor on the little images, 4 bit digital tube. It's not a digital tube, it's a LED display. It's definitely not a tube. Um, key 2, key 1, whatever key 2, key 1 does. Battery, the clock chip battery. Uh, yeah, okay, so that's battery backup. Uh, Pin, power pin header, provide power, interface for power supply, yeah, okay, yeah, that's input power. Uh, time, uh, the displays look a little bit, yeah, a little bit ropey there. Time, date, voltage, temperature, temperature ends in degrees C's. Um, display looks a little bit on the iffy side, it looks like that the uh, and the images, the, it's not consistent. You know. um, what you call it? Intensity of the uh, colours. Uh, I don't know how well reading that will be, but I guess we'll sign, find out. Uh, uh, someone's already done a review. Uh, someone called BB. Uh, very good price, small and nice. Doesn't meet technical spec. Uh, yeah, light not equal. My measures nine, not fifteen. Uh, yeah, it does look like that there are that someone did have issues with this. So it'd be nice to see whether or not they've actually resolved that. That was only a couple of months ago, about three months back. Looks like Yankee time. Uh, 25th of the fourth. 
February, March, April. It's now July. Let's see if they made any revisions on uh, this one. Let's see if they fixed the problems. Alright, so let's uh, crack on and um, yeah, let's power this up and see what it does. Um, let's power this up. Uh, basically what I've got down on the desk for testing this, got two multimeters, one to measure my supply voltage so you can see what voltage I'm, being, I'm supplying this with because it's meant to work over a different range. Another one's measuring current so we can see what input currents that the thing actually takes because I very much doubt that it is zero milliamps. It will take a certain amount of current, definitely. <laughs> Um, so we'll measure that, make sure it doesn't go over a 40 milliamp range. I've got my power supply current limit set to 40 milliamps, so if it does go above that will start kicking in. Uh, voltage resolution, 2.9 millivolts, well, yeah, we'll check that out and all the, uh, the measure voltage ranges and stuff. So let's plug this in and power up all right now. Let's switch our power supply on, up there, that's it. Uh, zero volts at the moment. Uh, made a little plugging thing. Uh, female header just going to the back pins. It is labelled positive and negative, so red to positive, black to negative. That's all plugged in, and we'll see what happens. Uh, this is going to be measuring uh, current, so we'll shift this to a milliamps range. This one is DC volts, so let's kick that on ready. Hopefully, you can see that clearly. Um, yeah. Maybe, just about, who knows. Um, blah, blah, blah. Uh, let's see if the back light, lights that one up a little bit more. Yeah. Maybe, you can't really see that too clearly on the little window on the video camera. Hopefully, you can see that a lot clearer, right? Enough bullshit in, let's get started. Okay, supplies on. Uh, yep, zero current, almost zero volts at the moment. No surprises there, thing doesn't work. Uh, it's increasing up, it's meant to start running at around five volts, so that's at that point there. Is that five? Five point one, five, and. Uh, uh, yep, yeah, roughly from about just above four volts it switches on, but the display definitely isn't working great. Um, you can see one of the horizontal lines, this one is dropped out. Um, turn it up, there it goes. Five volts. Looks like it's all running. All the segments are on. Um, the top though is a bit dimmer. You can see that on the camera. Uh, I'll try and get the angle so you can actually see that. Um, yeah, the top row is slightly dimmer than the rest, and can you see it's flickering? That top row is flickering as well. A slight flicker to it, so I'm not too happy with that. Let's see what happens if we increase it. What's our current at the moment? Uh, about, what's that, about 20-ish milliamps. So, yeah, so, operate, so minimum operating current, say 20 milliamps. Let's just cycle through this. Uh, what do these buttons do? Uh, that one looks like that one sets the uh, date, time, whatever that one is. Something zero zero U, uh, up zero C, and something else. Yeah, that's to select to set uh, this one. This one does. This one does. Oh yeah, there we go. Yeah. It's a typical problem with uh, these surface mount ones. They're not always that robust. You have to try and get it in the right position in order to switch. So that one actually just switch between the different things. Oh, well done a minute. I'm supplying this with five volts. I think this one's on the voltage range. I think that is meant to be a V. I don't know if you can see it. It's actually displaying seven volts and I'm only supplying this with um, uh, about 5.1 volts so yeah it does say it, the measure voltage range is only 7 to 18 volts um, so I imagine that's why it's 7 volts because it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a minimum range but you would have thought if you are under voltage 
if you are below the voltage range, you will come up with something other than 7 volts because that can be quite deceiving. You know, you might think that you're powering it with 7 volts when you got this plugged in, and you're not you're actually powering it with 5. So, yeah, that's a foul in my book, but a very bad one. It should read something like, I don't know, either you know, OL over range or under range or UL, whatever. You know, UR, OR, OL, you know, your standard multimeter. Uh, readings or at least show zero stating that you know it's an unmeasurable value <laughs> um, yeah all right well I'll we'll keep it on that range we'll see what happens to this as we increase the voltage it's oscillating about a bit so what we're going up to is six roughly around six volts there um, 6.7 it's changed to so it's actually gone down Six, it thinks it's about 6.7 um, up at 7 volts there we go it's just hit the 7 volt mark and it is measuring just flicked to 7 volts it's not um, the, although the, the colors are brightening in up but I have noticed something on this right hand side here uh, one of the actual 7 segment elements is lit I don't know why, but it's very pale, but you can see that it's actually lighting up. And uh, yeah, not too happy about that. This top one is still a little bit dimmer than the rest, if you can see that properly. It's very difficult to see because it looks like it's blurring on the uh, camera, but it might be just my screen because it's a low resolution LCD. Uh, okay, let's see what happens when we go above this. It's meant to go all the way up to 18 volts, so let's see. 9 volts, it seems to be holding reasonably steady at about 30 milliamps for this value. Let's see what happens when we um, uh, change the reading. Oh, actually, no, hold on. I've got, I'm measuring 10 volt. I'm supplying 10 volts. You can see it on my multimeter down the bottom. And this one. 10 volts uh, this isn't hasn't flicked over it's meant to read up to 18 volts but this is u1 u a little bar so yeah it's not displaying our voltages properly at all and um, that current is fluctuating all over the place as well so that's not good look at that that, that current is really uh, I know it is just flying all over the place at 10 volts. Is that the same lower down? No, up to about nine and a half consistent current once it which is 9.6 so that's roughly about right 9.6, 9.6. We slowly increase that, what happens? 9.9 is 9.9 .9. just come up to 10 10 volts and uh, yeah 10 volts and we flick straight over to that really odd display that is definitely not 10 it's not even displaying hex or anything like that is it so it's not a uh, yeah that is weird and you got that bar now as I'm increasing oh there we go 12.3 it's minus 0.4, point, point 0.4 volts apparently going up and up and up and up All right I'm uh, just coming up to 18 18 volts roughly yeah 18 volts no that multi that voltage function is definitely shagged um, that's no good that's a big foul um, Is there anything anybody can win to that? Let's find out. Ooh. What happened then? Oh no, it's just my clips touching. Yeah, so time function 40 milliamps roughly while it is fluctuating. This switch is definitely playing up as well, so I'm not too happy about that. 18 volts. Yeah, it looks like about 40 millivolts max. But, uh, yeah, this voltage function is definitely weird. Maybe for power cycling. Let's see. Just disconnect the power. Reconnect. Let's 
switch it to volts. No, still. Nah, that is well and truly knackered. So yeah, voltage range, measuring voltage doesn't do what it says. Um, does power from 5 to 18 volts. That's perfectly fine. Maximum current is about 40 milliamps. So minimum current, say about 20 milliamps. So it's 20 to 40 milliamps actually, and your voltage measure function is completely shagged above 10 volts. And you've got that extra little bar, so display needs working on, your voltage scale needs working on, and your documentation for your input currents definitely needs working on. Um, let's go on to um, temperature. Right, this it's still got that bar there. You can see it, even if you move the range, it's still got that extra little bar on this side. It just seems to be consistently there. Don't touch the back or anything, is it? No, 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 it's not a, a loose joint or anything like that, I don't think. I mean, it's not flicking in and out. Definitely getting something there, maybe parasitic oscillation or something on the uh, lines, which is causing that. Right, well, I think that it's 30 degrees. I have a matrix multimeter here which has a temperature function. I've got a uh, thermal couple attached to this. If I turn this to measure temperature, um, yep, uh, 27.7 so it's reasonably accurate. Well, no, actually it isn't. It just says it's out of one degree. Uh, let's hold this up here so we are in line. Let's see. 27, I don't know. Mm. 29, 27, yeah, it's reasonable, it's a couple of degrees, maybe two degrees out. It's not a big deal, yeah, I wouldn't expect it much. Uh, there is going to be some dissimilarity between the two instruments, so yeah, okay, whatever. Uh, let's see if we heat both of these up, let's see if it goes up proportionally if I put my fingers on it. Uh, or goes down in the case of that one 19 and 32 is that, eh? is that right? surely not, I should be a lot lot hotter than that hmm maybe this thermal couple is playing up Or is it my fingers? Hmm, one goes up, one goes down. Oh, that's interesting. Ah, now I wonder. Would help if it was plugged in around the right way on my multimeter. Just notice that. Let's have a check. Does this make a difference? Nope. Definitely not. 27 degrees. Breathe on it. Yeah, the meter's working reasonably okay. Um, yeah, it's a little bit slow off the mark on my multimeter, but. Yeah, about 30 degrees, roughly. So uh, yeah, it is measuring your temperature. Yeah, I'd say that's reasonably okay. It seems consistent. Right, uh, let's unplug that. Shift that to one side. I'll get hold of another multimeter after we've gone through the other functions and double check that uh, temperature. Right, moving on. Let's have a look. Let's see what other things we've got here. Right. That's a time function, I believe. All right, let's see what happens. Oh, ah, that's the cycle function, so it's actually cycling. Ooh, something is getting toasty warm on this somewhere over this side, but it might be just where I've been holding it. But then again, that is where the LEDs are. This one isn't particularly hot where it's been off, so yeah. 
probably driving the uh, LEDs at a little bit too high with 18 volts. So getting a little bit toasty warm. Let's try and knock it down to something reasonable. Well, let's set this to say 9 volts as if he was using a 9 volt PP3. So about 9.2 roughly. As if it was a fresh battery. And uh, yeah, we're still getting that. Um, still getting that top row. It's still dimmer and we've still got this up here even at 9 volts. So, uh, alright, let's switch it to time and let's see if we can set time. Let's go up, whatever, let's say it's that time. A few hours on. Yeah, date. Yeah, we can change the day. We can change the. Is that the month or the day? Is it Yankee time or is it UK? Okay, month first, day second. So I like to call Yankee time, American time, the American calendar, they love to do things in reverse. Also, we can set, oh, hold on a minute, that was something to do with setting uh, voltage. Right, let's just shift this. Alright, we can move this in points of a volt. Only by 0 0.3, 0 0.45, oh, something minus 2. Yeah, well, you might be able to adjust the uh, your voltage scale slightly. According to this, it does say voltage regulation accuracy. It might be something to do with that, but it definitely doesn't shift it. But from minus 2.5 to 2.5, it only does it from about minus from uh, you know minus 0.5, minus 0.4, was that? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. From minus five to uh, plus five to point minus point five to plus point five. I'm definitely up two point five. Um, well, that doesn't. That's not consistent with either the voltage resolution or your voltage um, accuracy regulation range. Um, so I don't know, I still don't know what that regulation accuracy range denotes it's meant to be for. Um, I'm still lost with that. Uh, next one along, uh, what have we got? Temperature, year, temperature accuracy, temperature position adjustment, minus 5, plus 5, let's say, minus 4, minus 5, yeah, morale, well that's definitely that. So that can, you can adjust the temperature. Um, reading by a few degrees if your uh, the mister is out slightly or the readings are out uh, only much use if you do have something accurate to check it against to test against so you can test it against a known sample set your um, whatever this to say point say one degree higher so it measures everything one degree higher and all that sort of stuff yeah, so a little bit of calibration there, I imagine, for voltage and uh, time there. We go. So time, yeah, it's moved on since I set it. So yeah, the clock is working. There you go, it just ticked over. So yeah, not a problem. And if we short this, zero power. Release. Does it keep time? No, it doesn't. Ah. What was this about battery backup? Battery backup only lasted about a second. <laughs> Anything longer than a second on the battery backup and it's dead, right. So I'll have a measure of, I'll have a measure of that battery and make sure that it isn't dead next, I think. So so far not looking hopeful. Battery backup doesn't seem to be working. Um, the display is a little bit on the iffy side with that extra bar and slightly you can see that on there the top row you got very inconsistent this one seems to be quite bright these ones a little bit darker your top row is slightly dimmer um, you do get that odd uh, little bar over here so the display is not great this switch is a little bit on the iffy side doesn't seem to be squishing that well. You really have to fiddle about a bit to um, switch. Uh, nothing's really 
Yeah, it's not robust at all. This isn't robust, your crystal flying everywhere. You, yeah, so this needs a little bit of work. I'm not sold on this. Um, and the electrical characteristics, it doesn't really match up to too much, uh, except for the input voltage range and the uh, the top end of the input current. That's the only thing they really matches to. Voltage resolution, 2.9 millivolts. It was uh, kind of sticking to that. Uh, it was close, but hmm, difficult to tell, since that this doesn't actually measure uh, in the tens of millivolts. It reads in hundreds of millivolts. So, but following it on the meter, it was switching over every so often around that value. So, hmm, on and off. Uh, but that voltage, measure voltage range is definitely screwed. It doesn't even display voltage properly. It doesn't even display numbers properly. That's a foul. Um, right. Um, yeah, so let's have a measure of this battery at the rear. I'll plug it back in and we'll, I'll grab another um, meter. Or I'll, we'll see if I can grab a different uh, temperature probe or something and compare the two so first up let's disconnect this and take the battery out okay all right so this battery is a uh, CR927 it's a 3 volt lithium coin cell uh, I've got this multimeter set up to measure Voltage, let's get rid of all that. Right. Okay, plus, minus, get rid of my clips. Right then. Battery, is it a dead battery? And that's why it was giving me dodgy readings. Let's find out. Yep. This looks dead as a dodo. Coin cells, what they actually supply with the units, dead. <laughs> Fat lot of use, that is. That is practically dead. Yeah, just check the opposite way around, just reverse that. Uh, uh, that's not doing anything. A couple of millivolts on that. Yeah. The uh, coin cell is dead that they do supply it with, so. Hmm. Major screw up there, guys. That's uh, not good at all. Um, right, let's replug in this uh, thing. Connect power and oh, I'll see if I can find another temperature tube. Uh, switch it to temperature. Uh, 31 degrees at the moment. Alright, that didn't take too long. I'm back. I've got myself a, um, a HI15100 uh, probe, uh, temperature probe uh, made by Hanna. Uh, can't, uh, what's that, check temperature 4 or something it's called, and it believes it is at 28.7 degrees. So, if I hold the end, does it increase? Yep, there it goes, about 30, 31, 33, going up degrees. About, yeah, 32 and a half, 32.67 and slowly going up, I'm not dead I'm just holding the probe uh, so 30 degrees, it was 27 so yeah, close, it's still a few degrees out and if I hold on to half the mister, what's it got up to? 33 so yeah, it's reasonably consistent on the old uh, temperature so time and temperature looks okay on this thing it definitely is just the uh, the voltage function that is completely shafted that switch and the uh, display being a little bit flaky around that digit 
Okay then, so, this little thing, there, chuck it away, it's not worth it guys. Um, it needs a hell of a lot of working on it, and looking at the site, it is on special offer at the moment, it's a one dollar down, almost 90 cents down, not a great saving for something that doesn't actually work. Um, was it a single screw up? Was it a manufacturer fault? Who knows? Um, I'm not really going to go into any more of that. IC station, if you're watching this, send me another one. I'll take a look at another one. But it's got to work. You know, if you're selling it for $5. Please, you're screwing people over. Um, selling something that doesn't actually do what it says. And judging by the literature, there's not much on there at all. Some of it is contradictory. Some of it, you know, it's not easy to understand until you actually get your hands on the device and you're playing with it. And there's no actual instructions there telling you how to use the controls, what the controls do, you know. Is it a voltmeter? No, it isn't a voltmeter. It's a voltage sense supply. This is just a supply monitor. Um, temperature, not too bad. That's almost there. Time, yeah, fine, okay. You can set the time, time works, whatever. Um, display needs working on. Um, yeah, I think it's time to recall that product and uh, sort out your bugs. As for the uh, stepper motor, well, it's very basic. Uh, it does what it says on the tin. Um, single chip solution and stepper motor, good for training purposes, learning how to use them. Uh, you can strip it off the board. Don't expect much off it. Um, there's not a huge amount of torque on this uh, stepper, but for position control and things like that, you know, you need your motors to turn to a particular angle or whatever your stuff, or step over a set speed. Um, yeah, perfectly fine. And uh, it comes with a driver chip as well, so if you want to hack it apart and pull it into your own piece of kit, you can take the motor off and the chip off, perfectly fine, because the chip is in a holder. So you can recycle the bloody thing. Um, yeah, so that's about it. I'd say out of five, eh, about four, about four, four out of five for this. Yeah. As for the other one, about one out of five, maybe two at push. It needs a lot of working on, and there's definitely more things wrong with that other than what that guy said in the actual review. So it hasn't been looked at yet and uh, steer clear of that product I would say. Anyways, see you next time.